Pino, come on! Come on, you! Don't forget your grenade! You identified the enemy! See! Okay, prepare to throw! Throw! Grenade! Grenade! Get down! Get down and kill us! Stay down! Not too bad, go and get him! Hurry up! Hello everyone, it is me, Matmus. Thank you so much for joining me today, I really appreciate it. So, today we're going to talk a little bit about the selection course that you must participate in to join the British Army. Now, things may have changed quite a bit since I was in. Uh, you know, it's been many years since uh, I've actually gone through my own selection into the British Army, and this video itself is quite old that we're going to go over and review today. However, some of the key points that I'm going to discuss in this video really are prevalent to your own selection process and how it can actually benefit you uh, and the things you can be aware of before going into it. Trust me, when I was going through my British Army uh, basic training and, you know, selection phase, there was, YouTube wasn't a thing. No one really watched YouTube. You didn't even have, you know, access to the internet on the flow like that. It just didn't exist. You couldn't just watch YouTube videos and find out what's coming. You had to listen to people who had been through the course or, you know, watch a VHS or a DVD from the recruiting office. Absolutely ridiculous. So I want to try and give you guys that are going into not just the British Army, for those of you going to any military force in the world, the kind of things that you're going to see and expect to go into selection. But specifically, really, for this video, the British Army. Now, as I said, things may have changed, but the core principles of some of the things I'm going to touch base on are really, really important, and I'd hopefully like you to take something away from there to allow you to get into the armed forces a lot easier and with less hassle. So let's go over this video then, we'll kind of pause it as we go and discuss some of the key things that I'd really like you to take away from today's video. Okay, this is where I want to stop the video initially. Folks, you've got to remember that selection, no matter where you are in the world going into a military force, is a gigantic job interview. If you know anything about interviews, or if you've never been interviewed before, do a bit of research. No one wants to see you showing up in tracksuit bottoms, joggers, sweatpants, hoodie, jewelry. It just, it's not a good idea. This gentleman right here has the right idea. Now, of course, I'm not telling you that the number one thing to do is dress up in a suit and tie and look as smart as humanly possible showing up at the train station to get picked up because sometimes it's just not practical you may not have the money or the resources sometimes even the time although time really isn't an excuse in my particular opinion because if you know selections coming it's at least going to be a couple of months in advance notice so you do have a bit of time to prepare but i don't say go out and buy the most expensive suit and tie and pants and khakis or wherever else you want to stick on yourself to make yourself look good however this gentleman has at least taken a step to try and become as presentable as he can he's got a haircut he's clean shaven he's not wearing a ton of jewelry and he's at least tried to look representable in his own attire please folks if you're going to selection bear this in mind no one cares that you support arsenal just wear the appropriate attire for a two day long or however long it is nowadays interview process you are applying for a job here folks okay is everyone here for selection yes Remy represent, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. When we first meet them, we give them yep. a reminder that they're in a military environment. Take your hands out your pockets. <laughs> Savage. Straight out of the minivan, he's straight to telling people to get their hands out of the pockets. That, my folks, is a British Army NCO right there. Surname? Trot. Trot. Grey. Grey. Petty. Petty. Wes. You do occasionally get people who turn up in sort of tracksuit and scruffy jeans, which immediately puts the light on them as to do they really want to put the effort in. There you go, folks, from the horse's mouth, or the Remy horse's mouth. Please, folks, it's really important. Try your best to look as representable as you can. Anybody wish they'd done more training before they got here? What? Who would say that? You're delivering these kids to the, you know, their selection day, and you said, well, well, you probably should have done more training. You've already installed a bit of fear into them before they even get there. If that was me, I would definitely not be saying that. Selection will take place at a secure army base. It's also the same sort of place that they will conduct their phase one training after selection. 
the military has its own way of doing things. This is something that the potential recruits and the recruits when they come into phase one train have to adapt to rather quickly. Date of birth? 1188. From Wembley, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay, you need to take that out your eye once you get into your dorm. Again, folks, as you can see, the lady has told her yes. to take her jewellery out of her eye. She's got an ear piercing or an eye, ear, eyebrow. I have no idea. Something in her body shouldn't be there. You should know that going into the army, you're not going to be able to have your piercings that are visible on your face. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so just be smart. Take them out before you get there. It saves you having some sort of infection, trying to remove it on selection. Just be smart. Take it out and prepare for that course. The corporals are the junior non-commissioned officers yeah, yeah. who the potential recruits will be in contact with minute by minute throughout selection. It pays to listen to what they have to say. Now, you're all here to join the army. It's like a big, long job interview. All we want is you to give us 100%. All the staff are here to help you. However, we do not take attitudes or laziness. That is the biggest and strongest piece of advice you're going to get initially into getting there. If you show up with attitude, thinking that you're going to get through selection by gobbing off, not answering to the rank, etc., etc., the place is not for you, and you're instantly going to get weaseled out. If you want to pursue a career in the military, answer them with the correct um, rank and authority, and just be polite, be friendly. They're not there to turn your life upside down to make you miserable. They're there to initialize you into potentially a military career. Listen to what they have to say. Be respectful. Trust me, they're going to help you transition through the two-day period really, really well, or whatever day period it is right now. They're not there to make your life miserable. It's not their job. In basic training, it's a very different world, okay? They're trying to get you out of that civilian mindset. Here, they are really trying to pursue into finding who is the right candidate, the right applicant to bring into the basic training program. All right, if we see any of that, or you give us any lip, you'll be sent home. Everyone happy? Yes, sir. I'll try it again. Everyone happy? Yes, yes sir. You are now on a secure army camp, okay? And you're not allowed alcohol or any sharp objects in your bags. Folks, pretty self-explanatory. Don't bring booze, don't bring knives, don't bring guns. Uh, you're just going to have a really bad day. You're in a military camp. They're not going to stand for it. The same thing applies for things like porn. I mean, I don't think anyone even watches porn or reads porn really anymore. I think everything's online. I don't really think that that's a thing anymore. But, you know, these are the kind of things you got to be aware of. You know, just don't be bringing stuff you really don't need to bring. I mean, I don't really have to say that, do I? So what I want you to do now is place your bags in front of you, open them up, and we're going to have a look inside. That is your suit in there, is it? Yeah, that's okay. Me. Yeah, okay, get your bag up. Take off any jewellery, okay, watches, rings, earrings, any piercings you may have, okay, also lose them. So a big reason as to why they're telling you to take jewellery off for other than obvious reasons is because at the end of the day, folks, things are going to go missing around people that you don't know sometimes. Thievery can be rife in these kind of situations. You've got to remember that this is a selection phase, which means they have no idea if these people have the integrity, the moral standards to not steal your stuff. So if you want to take your big old bling chain, even though you know you're going to take it off when you get there, why? Just leave it at home. Same for your iPhone. Same for all these other gizmos and gadgets. Don't be bringing your laptop. It's two days. You don't need it. It's things that can go missing, damaged, whatever else you may be. Please, folks, just be smart. Leave it at home. Turn your phones off and place on your bags. Ladies, you're in dormitory one. Gentlemen, dormitory two. You've got two minutes. Go. Now, the accommodation is obviously going to be extremely basic. You're there for two days, but that does not mean you do not look after your area, okay? You've been given the privilege of having literally two days free board. Now, I know that's kind of crazy to think about, but it is something you need to bear in mind and have the respect for the fact that they've brought you into their program, want to bring you in. They want you in the army. They're not bringing you here to weasel you out. They want to bring you in. They can mold you and shape you into a soldier, airman, sailor, marine, whatever it may be. But you really need to look after the environment that you're in. If you have a bed made uh, for you, as you can see, these beds have been prepared for them for when they come in. Make sure you look after it. You know, if you spill a drink or whatever on your sheet, clean it up. I don't know. Whatever else it may be, look after the area that you're living in, please. They're going to review it as they come through the program. If you 
have your area that bed space is absolutely gopping. They're going to say, you know, number 10, why is your room so gross? Why is your bed space so gross? They're going to notch you down on your scoring when it comes to the application uh, standards. So please bear that in mind. Just because you're staying in a room for only two days doesn't mean you don't look after it. I should have done that at home. See? No point. Leave your piercings at home, folks. So why are we here? We're here for selection, confirm your choice of job, and it's also a chance for you to look at us. And that's very, very important that you do that. Do you that's actually a really valid point here, folks. A lot of people that go into the armed forces quickly realize that it's either for them or not for them. You ideally do not want to be roped into going straight into basic training, passing selection if it's not for you. This isn't just a time for you to be selected and be, to be chosen from them. It's for you to choose and select them as the career you want to be in. Remember, you're going into a professional career and a lifestyle. It's not just a 9 to 5 job. There's a lot of intricacies you've got to think about. You, at the same time, are in some ways interviewing their career for what you want to go into, okay? So, you know, when you go into this program, you go into this two-day selection, really assess, is this for me? Is the little sprinkle of army that they're giving me right now that you know is going to get turned into a flood of army when you go through basic training? Is it something that you think you can stand or that you can hold on to? If it's not, maybe it's just not for you and you bow out. That being said, please folks, try your best to fight through and to continue going if you can. But if something clicks inside of you that says, really this just isn't for me, then that's what you need to make the decision and you can inform your staff and say, look, it's just not for me, I'm just not feeling it. Save yourself the trouble there than going through your basic training and having a hard time there instead. Now, that's not to deter you from joining, but I really want you to make sure that when you look into this career and you're going through the selection process, you realize that it's more than just a job. It is a lifestyle. You are literally devoting your entire life to the army at that point, depending on the terms of engagement that you sign. Please think about it. You trust us. Is this the organization that you want to join? The secret of success, both here at the Selection Centre and throughout your military career, is this. Try your hardest, give your best. Those that are prepared well will do well when they're here. And other than that, good luck. Right, you know you're all here to have your medicals. Um, before you go and see the doctor and have your examination, you'll have a few different tests. It has to be a thorough medical so that there's no surprises in basic training, really. Yes, there are ways of preparing um, by coming here refreshed, good night's sleep and well hydrated, plenty of water, um, tend to try and steer away from fizzy kind of drinks. They can be known to increase the heart rate. Okay, folks, so the medical is something that I really don't like to talk about very much. I am not in the medical profession or career. I am not part of a medical team in the British Army. And when it comes to people's medical standards and things that they can and cannot have, absolutely no way am I going to talk to that. It is not what I should be discussing. I can't speak to it. I get a lot of people on my channel asking me questions. Matsmus, I have this. Can I join Matsmus? I don't think I can join if I have this. I will never answer to those questions. I won't even talk about it because it's just not a good idea. Um, if you have any kind of medical concern, your local doctor is going to be the best person to investigate as to whether or not it's a condition that may affect you going into the armed forces. The British Army is going to check you thoroughly from eyesight, hearing, everything. And I mean everything. And they need to because they're trying to make sure they look out for you. It's not about trying to, you know, ensure the army that they're not going to cost money from you. I mean, it's a part of it, but they're looking out for you. They don't want to bring you into the army uh, and all of a sudden you have an injury that could get worse by going through army basic training. So do not be fearful of the medical, okay? There is absolutely no point. Your body is what your body is. If you can do things to try and help make your body healthy, healthier, looking after your body, going out and working out, um, eating healthier, you know, uh, not listening to super loud music 24-7, um, you know, not staring at iPhone screen from the hours of 12 till 6 at night. It's not good for your eyes. You need to start looking after yourself if you want to go into a career where your body's going to be put to the test. Please think about that as you go through, but do not be fearful of the medical. There is a lot of attributes that I can't really speak to about it, but don't be fearful of it, okay? P, N, 
D H L E N. Six, 45, one more go. The major problems that we have are they find heart murmurs. Take a deep breath, push it out. I'm very, very confident in my own mind that the murmur that I'm hearing in your, in your chest is an innocent murmur. Now, that was one of the things that people always got so fearful of. They heard, you know, people coming out of the office after they'd just done the medical, they go, I've got a heart murmur, I've been deferred, or I've got a heart murmur, they don't know what they're doing, or uh, they don't know what it is, or blah, blah, blah. Look, folks, the human body is a, a magical, weird, and wonderful thing. Doctors will sometimes hear or see or feel things on your body that they're not quite sure about, and they will put you on a deferral. That does not mean you are not granted to get into the British Army. However, it could mean that. Uh, it's all down to, you know, what the doctor feels at the time and, this, you know, the analysis that they make. But please don't be fearful of the heart murmur thing. That's all I used to worry about when I went through my selection was people talking about the old heart murmur and how they couldn't get in. Look, this guy has a deferral for a heart murmur. They're going to check it over. It might be nothing. So don't worry too much about it. But we have to do a couple of tests. And then we have um, dental problems and opticians reports, you know, a whole range of things. Okay. Mostly people are That's deferred, fine. they're not failed. We look forward to seeing you again. It'll be in about a month's time. A deferral isn't the end of the line. It can be um, upsetting, but we do spend quite a long time with them and we reassure them. Um, have you understood what the medical staff have said to you and why you've been deferred? Yeah. You do understand that. Yeah. Have they made an appointment for you? Yeah. And when's that? 19th of August. Well, that's good news because if it's only the 19th of August, that's not too far away, is it? So as soon as we get that information sent back to us, that deferral will be lifted, and then you can be called back on selection. By the left, quick march, left, right, left. Well, they march, but uh, when they get to phase one, they learn to do it properly. It gives them a sort of idea about the army. Again, you're going to be doing a lot of marching and things that really aren't. I mean, for those of you who've been the cadets or whatever else, other programs where you know how to march, look, don't read into it too much, folks. That No one knows how to march for the most part of who else are with you. So just take it with a pinch of salt. It's purely just getting you into the mindset. Don't read into it too much. Now, if you look at the picture that we're looking at right now and the statement that he's about to make, it almost cracks me up laughing when they talk about how the nutritional value of what they're getting is so high. Yes, of course, gigantic fries and beans are what really keep a soldier fighting. Honestly, for British soldiers, it actually is what keeps a soldier fighting is chips and baked beans. It did for me anyway, but the modern army has changed a lot now compared to what it is with these uh, kind of foodstuffs in the cookhouse. That includes the grub. It's, uh, it's nutritious and there's always plenty of it. <laughs> nutritious. That's fantastic. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. DST is basically a mathematical test. There are 55 questions and it will take about half an hour to complete the test. Your time starts now. Okay, folks, so anyone who is going into a technical trade normally will have to compete, compete? complete um, in a test. Now, the test is going to go over your basic you know, mathematical skills, problem solving, etc., etc. A little different from the barb test. I don't know if it's still called the barb test in the British Army or the, uh, I guess, basic skills test. Uh, but this is something you really need to prepare for. Remember, like the CO said at the beginning of this video, those who prepare do well. If you do a bit of revision, do some math practice, do some English practice, do whatever you can to prepare yourself for this test. There's a lot of information and resources out there nowadays that I didn't have when I was going through um, online that will assist you with these tests. There's a ton of information out there, a ton of sources that will help you read it up, get practice in, don't show up to this test unprepared because you may potentially make yourself a, you know, potentially failing candidate if you don't prepare for it. Not everyone does the TST. Its purpose is to assess the suitability of the applicants for certain technical trades in the army. It's like GCSE <laughs> maths, what comes up. The fractions and the decimals and the algebra was the hardest. I'm glad I revised a bit in, uh, in some mass revision booklets, definitely. See, there you go. He's done his revision, and I think really you should too. It's a big part of going into a technical trade, and I myself going into the Remi, which was a pretty heavy technical trade, especially as a mechanic, uh, knowing your math. If you don't have good math skills or even, you know, basic... Um, you know, division, multiplication, etc., etc. If you don't have that stuff, you're going to have a real tough time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this part of your selection, which is known as the icebreaker. Each of you, individually, are going to come up here and you're going to tell us a little bit about yourselves. 
Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Jones. The Army needs people who can work as a team. Being able to communicate is a foundation for working as a team. The icebreaker gives us an indication of how well the potential recruits have prepared. Okay, folks, so this is a pretty important one. And once again, you can so easily prepare for this. Even if you are very shy, very nervous, you can prepare for this very easily. There's going to be about 10 to 20 people in the same room as you going through the same stresses and worry that you're probably going to feel that you shouldn't be feeling because you're all in the same boat. You're all in the same room. Yes, there's going to be a couple of instructors watching. That's their job. They watch them all the time. They watch you. They watch the next person and they assess how you're doing. You can prepare for this. Practice interview skills in the mirror. Speak to your parents, your family, your friends. Just do icebreakers over and over again in your mind and speak to those in your local area, um, or local area, but speak to those who you can get assistance from and look them in the eye, have some contact with them so that you're not just staring at a wall because the instructors will read through that. They want you to have a bit of eye contact with the people you're discussing. Be loud, be confident. Confidence is key. They want to know that you're not just going to back away from a challenge. This is a bit of a challenge. It's one of your first challenges you're being thrown at other than fitness through the selection process. They want you to speak about yourself. Prepare a speech. Prepare it. Revise it. Learn it. It doesn't have to be, you know, verbatim, which basically means talking of uh, recital and reciting something that you just memorized. You should really have a bit of personal character to it. Talk about where you're from, talk about your favorite sports, talk about what you do and don't like, talk about why you want to join the army, what you want to be in the army. These are all the kind of things that you can do to prepare. If you don't do this and you do not prepare and you just show up, you may choke, you may falter and potentially lose points to getting selected. There's plenty of things you can do to prepare for selection, everyone. I can get a lot fitter and I believe that getting fitter in the army is the best way to do it. And you can soon see who the confident ones are. The ones who communicate with other lads and girls. Uh, my weak points are I don't always like being told what to do. I'm the one. Yeah, I mean, that's not the best thing to be saying is I don't always like to be told what to do. You're going into the army. Um, as you can see, her eye contact isn't quite there. Now, it's hard to see where she's looking here. I don't think she's looking at anyone. Don't look at the floor. Don't look at the ceiling. Just try and cross your eyes between each member of the person's inside the room it's it's a really hard thing to do for those who aren't used to it but you have to practice once it can't um it was horrible i just ran out of what to say listen in for the first test with corporal taylor welcome to the undergrass heave test physical selection standards or pssrs are a series of physical strength exercises that focus on the upper body and every applicant takes these hang down hang down to the exercises are degraded the results of which will determine whether or not they've reached the standard for the job they're applying for. A job like the Royal Engineers is quite physically demanding and the results will need to be higher than some of the less demanding jobs in the army. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's funny. The Royal Engineers are a high, high level of, uh, <laughs> of physical fitness there. I can, uh, I can safely say that uh, coming across the Royal Engineers in my own cross-country a British Army career of sports back in the day, they certainly weren't up to the uh, fitness standards that some of the other corps were up to, let's put it that way. Well, some people do struggle, especially on the heaves, but if they've done some serious training when they're at home and not just blagging it, they don't really find it that hard. <laughs> okay, folks, again, preparation. This is very easy to do. Get your fitness up. It's not about just going for long distance runs. You need to work on your overall cardiovascular, so fartlek training, interval training, pull-ups, push-ups, press-ups, whatever you want to call them, sit-ups. Get working on them every day. Try and set yourself a goal. Today I'm going to do 40. Today I'm going to do 20. Just make sure you do those 20. If you set yourself a goal, stick to it. Prepare well in advance. You're going to have at least two to three months to prepare. Don't leave it to the last minute. Oh, I'm going to get... I'm going to go on vacation for three weeks and take it easy. Uh, I'll, I'll train when I get back. It's too late. You may have other things that pop up. Focus on your fitness straight away as soon as you get that letter for selection. Three, two, one, push. Come on, push, push, push. Each soldier, regardless of job, they have to carry their own personal kit. And this requires a certain level of body strength. That is the main reason it's so important. Three, two, one, pull. Come on, pull. Pull, pull. Come on, last effort yeah. now. Come on, best effort. Come on. We're looking for a good attitude determination and a willingness to try each exercise. Lift and lower. Next time you come through, use your legs, attack it, drive up with it. 
Again, technique is very important here, folks. It's not about just punching as hard as you can. Listen to what the instructors are telling you. They will tell you to repeat that exercise or that particular movement over and over again until you do the way that they want you to do it. If you do not do it as per the standard, they may potentially fault you and say, I'm sorry, we can't let you keep going. You're not doing it to the standard or to the method that we're telling you. If they're telling you to bend your knees and to lift with your legs and not with your back, that's what you need to do. So please, folks, don't knock yourself down on points or getting in trouble over this particular process. Do the exercises as requested by the instructors. They are professionals. They know what they're doing, and they're doing it to assess your body strength overall, not just your arms or where you think you're strong. They know where they want you to be strong, and that's why they're telling you to do these specific exercises. It's not because they think, oh, we just want to test how much you can lift. They want to know that you're able to lift a rucksack, a bergen, your webbing, jerry cans, ammunition, blah, blah, blah. There's specific instances that check your body over to see if you're physically adept to going into the army. Get yourself a rest, suck yourself up, get yourself in the right frame of mind. Shake your arms off, press forward. Ready, lift. And lower there, lower, lower. That is number 20, 50 kilograms. Go, stay in line with me. Jerry can test is designed to uh, test the muscles in your arms, your shoulders, and your grip strength. Because the jerry cans, they weigh 20 kilograms each. Basically, we test them to see how far they can carry them. Folks, this is a really simple test. Um, the excuses that these two individuals are about to give me are definitely not something that I would accept as something that you know is, is practical. They have sweaty hands. I'm sorry, but if you have sweaty hands and cannot lift two jerry cans, the army really isn't for you. Uh, you should be able to have enough grip within your hands to hold those jerry cans down the length of the line that you're getting asked to do so. If you're not, I'm sorry, but sweaty hands don't cut it. It's purely down to you do not have the physical strength within your hands. You've not practiced or done your fitness to get what you need to do to lift these jerry cans. It's a very easy task, folks. Honestly, it's not difficult. They're not that heavy. You'll be fine. But if you don't prepare, like this young lady may have not done, I'm not saying she hasn't, um, but uh, you, you're going to struggle. And, you know, the, the sweaty palms thing, I just I don't, don't agree with it. It slipped out of my hand and I kept on banging on her jerry cans. My hands were too hot, I couldn't, they were sweating, so slippy, I could, slipped they? straight out. Yeah. Okay, you spot it's just on your chest. Follow me. Keep going, gents, ladies, knees up higher, come on. Short and sharp. During the evening PT session, we mainly do relays. This is to get them bonding and working well as a team. Yeah, this is something that, again, you really need to work hard at because this is where they're looking at you for that effort level. If you're not putting 110% in, and I know the 110% thing is a really cringe thing to say, trust me, that 110% thing has come from instances like this back when I was young and it's followed me through my life saying that statement. But that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that little bit extra. They want you to motivate others. They want you to go the extra mile. They want to see you sweating and working hard. If you do this exercise or this gym session and you're not sweating, something is not going correctly. It's not specifically a test, but it is useful for us to see the approach and the attitudes of the candidates. We can then see the ones that are trying to bluff the way, and we can see the ones that are putting 110% in and working hard. Look at that little sneaky Land Rover in the background there, just like hiding behind the trees. Like, I'm coming to get you. The physical fitness test, that was all right. We did quite well in that. It's all right. It's all right, wasn't it? It's all right. Yeah, it was all right. Nothing wrong with that. It's all right. Yeah. It wasn't too hard. Nothing that I haven't done before. Yeah, it was a bit like RP lesson, really. That was good. On a team event like the Gun Run, for example, they'll probably make a hash of it for the first one or two goes. Ubik! However, by the third or fourth attempt, they'll start to bond as a team. Then they'll really get to go with it. What we're looking for here from the applicants is teamwork and to motivate each other. See, now that team was smiling. These these guys aren't smiling so much. They're not, they're not so happy. I think because they're the losing team and they're probably going to have to do the exercise again. 
it was hard, but you take your mind off it by working in a team with everybody and just having fun instead of thinking it's hard work. You make a lot of friends really quickly, um, get plenty of encouragement and, and skid laughs. Good. That's actually another really important part of this. You're going to be with these people only for two days, but I can guarantee you're going to meet people you get along with. You're also going to meet people you're not going to get along with. But overall, it's really beneficial to be around these kind of people because these are the kind of people who have the same aspirations and goals and career wants that you do. So you're probably going to have quite a lot of things in common. You want to be a part of the army. That's a pretty big thing that you have in common. You're going to have the same kind of skills, probably the same kind of etiquette that others do in your group. So make the most of it. Get along with people. Do not be that grey man tucking into the corner or woman where you just don't speak to anyone. I'm never going to see these people again. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to pass this with flying colours and then I'll just go to training. I'll never see these people again. Be careful with that because you don't know what's going to happen when it comes to these people going into what career they want. They may tell you they're going into the infantry. They may tell you they're going into the logistics armored core whatever it may be but when the push comes to shove it's down to the selection officer that puts them where they want to be that person you shunned during selection may be the person that you see during your basic training so please folks be that brother slash sister that looks after one another in that brotherhood community slash sisterhood community and just be a good person around others in the course Good fun. And then we do tabs. Which Passing selection is just the first hurdle. Uh, the first Should they be successful here, they'll go on to do phase one. You big basic training. Meet the troops is the first opportunity for the applicants to meet some recruits currently in phase one training, to ask them any questions and to get a feel for what it's really like. What's the longest endurance run you've had to do so far? We've done six miles. That's the longest we've done. That's not just tarmac. You actually up hills, down hills, round tracks. Make the most of this, folks. Honestly, it's handy to have. These people that you're going to be able to speak to are going through the process uh, during basic training. And it's going to give you, once again, that really important factor of this entire thing. Is this where I want to be? Is this what I want to be doing? You're going to see what is coming up literally live in front of you. People giving you first-hand experience as to what you're about to go into next. Listen to what they have to say and ask as many questions as you can that are, you know, within reason. They don't have that much time. There's a lot of people there and they want to try and get through as many people as they can. But if you have a question that you've had in the back of your mind for quite some time about basic training, first of all, come speak to me if you're going into the British Army because I could probably help quite a bit. But second of all, when you go through selection, ask these people. They're going through the process. My advice would be is to do a bit of training at home before you actually come because nobody likes to come in last. How has the Army changed you? It's me had a lot more discipline, a lot more confidence. Uh, what's the best thing to do before the run tomorrow? Drink plenty of water. Okay. Loads of fluids. Okay, everyone. Well, we're going to put it on pause for there because we've already been going for a little while and we'll continue on with the second phase of selection uh, a little later on in another video. I hope that you take at least something away from the initial part of this video so you can kind of have an idea of the things to expect. Now, things have changed. Obviously, we don't see that beautiful DPM pattern combat uniform anymore. It's changed quite a bit into the MTP, uh, but that's not what I'm focusing on. It's more along the lines of the core principles of going through this selection process. You really need to make sure that you're taking on board some of the things I'm talking to you about. Looking after one another as a team, confidence, fitness, 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 work on your fitness. Okay, it's the number one thing you can prepare for. Think about interview techniques, etc., etc. So when we get to the next video in the near future, trust me, I'm going to do another one on this. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more that involves in the interview pro process and some of the things you expect towards the end of the selection process. But I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. If you did, leave me a comment, leave me a like. If you want to support my channel, go check out my Patreon account. It'd be really appreciated. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.